Jesus is the judge of the whole world. But before Jesus can begin to judge the world, there are certain things that must be in place. Uh, let's just look at a few of them. Number one is the least hold on the earth must expire. God gave Adam a six day least hold of this earth. So that least hold must expire before Jesus can begin to judge. Not only that, in Revelation chapter 5, uh, verse 7, we're told that uh, the, the scroll or the book is in the right hand of God the Father. That document is actually the certificate of ownership of the earth. It, it must be given or taken by Jesus before he can begin to judge. Another thing that must happen even before he can take the certificate of ownership of the earth is that there has to be the marriage of the Lamb. Because in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 2 we are told that we, the, the born again Christians who <clears throat> are looking forward to being raptured into heaven, will judge the world with Jesus Christ. So we have to be there before the judgment can take place. Moreover, marriage of the Lamb can take place without a few things also being in place. The first one of them is that there has to be a hierarchy. Right now on earth, since I equal, there is no hierarchy on earth. We are all looked on as equal because um, the hierarchy of sins will be determined uh, at the judgment seat of Christ. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, the uh, Bible says, We shall all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Of course, the all there means those who are eligible to be raptured. And then every saint must have an ID. In Revelation chapter 2, verse 17, we are told that there will be a white stone. That will be given to every raptured saint. He has writings on both sides. Then the for that to happen, of course, the saints must be in heaven. And then that means rapture must take place before these events can come to pass. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 to 17. Now we are talking about the great falling away. And one thing we must bear in mind is. The, the what makes it significant, what makes it a remarkable, profound event that there is a great falling away. I mean, Christians have been falling away right from the, the inception of the church, but that is not the great falling away that we're talking about. Let's look at um, <clears throat> what, what it really means. Adam and Eve were sons of God. What made them sons of God was they were implanted with the image of God. I call that image of God hypostatic chip because hypostasis is the essential nature of Jesus Christ as both human and divine. And therefore, it's a transformative agent that transformed the inward man uh, to son of God. And that is exactly the reason for the implantation. And then we know that only Adam and Eve who had that privilege until they fell in the Garden of Eden. If you look at scripture from Genesis to the birth of Christ, there was no human being on earth who was implanted with a hypostatic chip. None. None whatsoever. Now, but from the birth of Christ to his ascension, he was the only one who had, you know, uh, <clears throat> the fullness of God. Because the Bible tells us that he was the express image of the Godhead. Now, from the day of Pentecost to the rapture, that is now when we can begin to see the implantation of uh, the image of God or a positive chip. There has to be something from God that makes a human vessel a son of God. Therefore, in John chapter 20, verse 22, and when he has said this, he breathed on them. Take note of that. He breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. 
disciples of Jesus Christ were not born again while the Lord was still on earth. No, they were not born again because in the divine arrangement is the duty of the Holy Spirit to implant the image of God into human vessels. And that is why Jesus said, or the Holy Spirit, that it's an expedient of it that I go away because if I do not go away, the comfort of the Holy Spirit will not come because it is his assigned duty and that is exactly what happened notice that when Jesus breathed on them, nothing happened unlike in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, when he breathed on the thing he molded on the ground and then the power of the Holy Spirit came and transformed it into an intricate machinery that we call the human body today so the Disciples, nobody was born again. That's the point I'm trying to make. Nobody was implanted with image or hypostatic chip uh, before the day of Pentecost. Therefore, what does it really now mean to fall away? To fall away is to forfeit the implanted chip. It has been happening right from the beginning. People simply, you know, forsake. Uh, the Lord simply uh, changed their mind and uh, the, the, the chip is taken away. But there are three occasions when, when, the, when the chip can be taken away irreversibly. And one of them is uh, the um, commission of the unpardonable sin. In Hebrew chapter 10, verse 26, the Bible says, For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. Unpardonable sin doesn't happen frequently, but it does happen. And once it happens, no, that's it. Then the second occasion is uh, physical death. In Hebrew chapter 9 verse 27, the Bible says, it is appointed unto men once to die, but after that, the judgment. At the moment of death, judgment takes place. <laughs> I said that to be rapturable or to spend eternity in uh, the lake of fire and root uh, hell. So, what is great falling away? The great falling away is the moment of ecclesia rapture because rapture is judgment and it is God the Holy Spirit who performs that. So he selects those who are eligible, those who are qualified. There are so many scriptures that tell us about qualification. At the moment of Ecclesia rapture is when the great falling away will take place. Let, look, let's see Revelation chapter 3 verse 11. Behold, I am coming quickly, Jesus speaking. Hold fast what you have what you have that no man may take your crown actually it's a crown the crown of righteousness now after the rapture of the ecclesia there will be no christians on the earth the eligible church will be lifted up to heaven and that's it jews and gentiles have three options after the rapture of the ecclesia the first is to take the mark of the beast and enjoy uh, limited time freedom uh, the, the, the enjoy the kind of peace that uh, Antichrist will bring, all the good things he will promise, he will, uh, but then that's for a season. The second is to attempt to survive the great tribulation of seven years. It's a difficult thing, but surprisingly people will survive it. There will be, uh, and not a limited number of people, a lot of people will survive it. Now the third option is martyrdom. In Revelation chapter 12 verse 11, the Bible says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, uh, by the word of their testimony, and did not um, resist death at the hand of uh, the Antichrist. Matadom. Matadom before um, rapture carries a prize, a crown. But martyrdom after the rapture of the Ecclesia is one of the three qualifying uh, requirements for participation in the rapture of great tribulation matters. Now to summarize, Rapture is the only way to enter heaven in a perfect state. In this dispensation of grace, there is no other way. But rapture 
is not a single event. There are actually five raptures in the Bible. The first had taken place in Acts chapter 1, we are told how Jesus was addressing his uh, disciples and a cloud took him into heaven. That was a rapture, the first one. The four remaining ones, two of them pertain to Jews and very specific people mentioned in the Bible. But the one that is most important to you and I is the rapture of the Ecclesia. This is the rapture of dead and living saints. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 to 17. There is another rapture after that. A rapture that will involve billions of people is the rapture of tribulation matters. You can read it up in Revelation chapter 7, verses 13 to 17. Now, if you miss the rapture of the Ecclesia, do not take the mark. It's not worth it because it will consign you forever and ever into the lake of fire. Do not even bother to strive to survive the great tribulation because even if you do, you'll be subjected to another test. And that test will be carried out by angels because when the Lord Jesus Christ returns to earth with his entourage, he will assign, he will give angels the authority of going through the whole earth and selecting those who are worthy to transit into uh, the millennial kingdom of Christ. So he said a tough uh, situation. The best option is the third one, that's uh, martyrdom. Choose martyrdom and at least you will enter heaven. Even though you will not be in the priesthood of Christ, even though you will not enjoy the privileges of those dead and living saints will enjoy after their rapture, you will at least be in heaven and operate on the millennial earth as the Nathanim. Thank you for watching this video. Oh, I played with you to click on the like button and just to encourage us, subscribe to our channel for more Focus on Rapture videos. Also, you can click on the notification button for information on new videos. Mm -hmm.